মন্ত্র গুরু শিখ গুরুগণ তা চরণে আগে করিয়া বন্দন বন্দে আম শ্রী গুরু শ্রী জুট পারে কমল শ্রী গুরু নৈষ্ণব শ্রী রূপম সগর জাতম সাহগন রগন তম মিতং তং সজীবম সদ্বৈতম সবদূতম পরিজন সাত কৃষ্ণ চৈতন্য দেব শ্রী রাধা কৃষ্ণ পারণ সহগন ললিত শ্রী বিশাখং মিতং পঞ্চাকপুত্র বিষ্ণুকৃষ্ণ পবন বৈষ্ণব ভু নমো নম ওম জ্ঞান তিমনন্দ জ্ঞানঞ্জন শলাকায় চুক্ষুষ উন্মোদন শ্রী গুরুবে নম নম ওম বিষ্ণু পরায় কৃষ্ণ পৃষ্ঠায় বুটল সুমন ভক্তি বেদন্ত স্বামী নমনে নমস্তে সরস্বতী দেবে গৌরবাণী প্রচারিণে নির্বিশেষ শূন্যবারী পশ্চাৎ Uh, in that regard, how Prabhupada was making the facility available for people to become interested in the writings of a pure devotee and in that way become eligible to bring, begin the practice of pure Uttam Bhakti. And Prabhupada's whole mission was in that way facilitating this very important principle of Rupa Goswami. We define and explain the process of Sadhana Bhakti with references to analogies Dr. Rishama just into verses, explaining that the, the Bhava stage of love of Godhead is explained as being inherent in the heart, and the Shadana practice is like a practice to awaken that inherent uh, condition, <clears throat> just like inherently walking is there in the, in the child's infant, they inherently can walk just as a little bit of support, they can walk, and the guidelines like the prescription of the doctor to cure the patient so that we can behave in such a way as to awaken as a result of Bhagavad, Bhagavad Bhakti Jukta being engaged in devotional service under the expert guidance of the spiritual master awakening the feeling Sravanadi Shuddha Chitte Kuraya Udai having a, attained a purified heart Shuddha Chitte as a result of the sadhana process purified the heart Kuraya Udai there is awakening of natural affection to Krishna So this is the practice of sadhana, is that uh, awakening process. Explain the distinction between Vaidhi and Raghunuga sadhana bhakti, which we will discuss in more detail when we get to chapter 14 of this section. And we were discussing how the sadhakas can also practice Vanasaram Dharma, as was recommended by Sri Rupa Goswami, and in this way the whole of society can live very harmoniously, and uh, awaken their love of Godhead by the practice of Sadhana Bhakti. This is a Shankirtan movement of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, as <coughs> brought to you via the authorized parampara of Srila Prabhupada and his followers in the International Society for Krishna Consciousness, Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. So we're beginning today, Lesson 5. This is a study of, well, in Lesson 5 today we will cover Chapters 3, 4 and 5 of the Nectar of Devotion. So beginning in chapter 3, eligibility of the candidate for accepting devotional service. Uh, Srila Prabhupada writes, On account of his association with Mahatmas or great souls, 100% in the devotional service of the Lord, one may attain a little bit of attraction to Sri Krishna, but at the same time may remain very much attached to fruitive activities and material sense enjoyment. Such a person, if he has unflinching attraction to Krishna, becomes an eligible candidate for discharging devotional service. So in this first paragraph of chapter 3, Srila Prabhupada is paraphrasing the verse of Srila Rupa Goswami, which reads as follows, Ya kenapi ati bhagyena jata shadho shabane nati shakto na baragya bhag asyam adikari asho 
the person who has developed faith in serving the Lord by impressions arising from previous association with devotees, who is not too attached to material objects and not too detached, is qualified for Vaidhi Bhakti. It's text 14 of the second chapter of the Bhakti Rashamrita Sindhu. So in this way, we can see Rupa Goswami is describing three specific characteristics for eligibility to begin the practice of devotional service. That is, one should have association of devotees, one should not be overly attached to the material senses and nor overly detached from, to the material uh, engagements. Uh, after describing this general eligibility of the candidate, Rupa Goswami subsequently goes on to give a analysis of three classes of devotees. And if we take a look at the chart in the slides, Prabhupada begins by explaining the the, the eligibility of the first class devotee, that he's very much convinced in Krishna consciousness and he's able to convince others, a very highly advanced, liberated and realized soul. The Madhya Madhikari and also that highly advanced realized soul is expert in the science of Krishna Tattva as given in the revealed scriptures as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu explained. When he ordered the Kurma Brahman that Jari Deka Tadikoha Krishna Ubadesh Amara Gai Guru Hoi Taradesh that one can become a guru Amara on the order of Chitani Mahababu by simply understanding Krishna Ubadesh as is given in Chitana Char as is given in the Srimad Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam, these uh, important Granta scriptures of the Vaishnavas, and in this way one can be able, able to convince others. So this is the standard of a first-class devotee. He's convinced about Krishna consciousness and uh, is applying himself. And as Kavaraj Goswami also explains that uh, that if one is not practicing oneself, one's teachings will not be fruitful. So therefore the Uttam Bhakta is personally applying very much strictly all of the principles of Krishna consciousness and based on his expertise in the revealed scripture he's able to convince others to take to Krishna consciousness. This is Uttam Adhikari, the first class qualification for beginning the practice of uh, Sadhana Bhakti. The Madhyam Bhakta is here Madhyam qualified eligibility that he's convinced but he may not be expert in the study of Shastra and may not always be able to defeat other opposing arguments and the Kanishta Bhakta may have weak faith and also cannot uh, convince others through uh, Shastric arguments. So these are, they're, they're all eligible for the practice of Sadhana Bhakti and uh, there's the first class eligible as described, second class eligible, Madhyam uh, eligibility, Adhikari and the Kanishta Adhikari. And uh, in this way, specifically in relation to the eligibility to practice Sadhana Bhakti, they are being analyzed by Rupa Goswami. Uh, over the page, Prabhupada writes, further classification of the neophyte devotee is made in the Bhagavad Gita. So more so than we could say, we could say even, even working back, even more progressive or uh, more, more uh, further classified beyond the Kanishta level, uh, Rupa Goswami is giving these four categories as given in uh, Bhagavad Gita of the Arta Jigyashu, Artarti and the Jnani. And uh, Rupa Goswami also gives examples of each of these categories. Gajendra, the sages at Namasharanya, Maharaj Dhruva and the four Kumaras. Prabhupada is commenting. Such beginners can be elevated to the second class or first class platform if they associate with pure devotees. So that is the way of elevating oneself in whatever condition one may be. If he is fortunate enough to associate with pure devotees, then very quickly he is elevated to the second class or the first class platform. And over the page also, Prabhupada is mentioning on the top of the next page that without becoming elevated to the position of a jnani or a wise man, one cannot stick to the principle of worshipping the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Prabhupada's commenting, a wise man who becomes attached to Krishna does not want any return from him, either in the form of relie relieving distress or gaining money. That means from the very beginning his basic principle of attachment to Krishna is more or less love. Without becoming elevated to the position of a jnani, 
or wise man, one cannot stick to the principle of worshipping the Supreme Person of the Godhead. If it can be concluded that a person who is free from the bodily concept of life is an eligible candidate for pure devotional service. In this way, the eligibility of the candidate has been discussed. Uh, the next chapter, which is entitled Devotional Service Surpasses All Liberation, this is an elaborate uh, compilation by Srila Rupa Goswami on how Bhagavad Bhakti, devotional service to Sri Hari, is a far superior practice than uh, uh, even at the, the attainment of the Sitha Purushas and the Mukta Purushas who have attained liberation. Muktanam, Apisidhanam, Narayana Parayana, Kotishvapi Mahamune, Prashantatna Sudulaba. Even amongst uh, the Muktanam, Apisidhanam, liberated and perfected beings, uh, Narayana Parayana, a devotee of Lord Narayana, is very rare, a very, uh, a very rare achievement. So, chapter 4 is an elaborate compilation of so many verses from different Shastras which further give evidence that the practice of Bhagavad Bhakti surpasses the stage of liberation and Rupa Goswami provides an elaborate, abundant uh, treasure of verses from the Puranas and other literatures there to support that conclusion and that can be read in uh, one's own time. Rupa Goswami goes on to describe that Bukti Mukti Spriha Javad Pishachari Ridi Vartate that possessing these Bukti desires, material desires and Mukti desires for liberation, with being influenced by the black art of a witch, in both cases one is in trouble. Prabhupada's commenting in his purport, anyone who has any desire of aspiration for satisfying his senses by becoming more and more important either in the material sense or in the spiritual sense cannot actually relish really the sweet taste of devotional service. So one has to overcome the influence of uh, bhukti and mukti which are like uh, pishicha, uh, two uh, witches that will haunt one and prevent one, create obstacles from preventing one from tasting the real bhakti rash, amrit, which is founded at the sweetness of the flavor of devotional service which can be enjoyed by the uh, cultivation anukalena krishna anushilana bhakti uttam, cultivation of pure devotional service at the stage of sadhana. So also we should uh, practice uh, this important principle of uh, removing the desires for liberation and for material remuneration. <coughs> the next chapter, Devotional Service Surpasses All Liberation, uh, Srila Rupa Goswami gives uh, elaborate uh, references from Puranic literature and other Vedic literatures describing that the practice of devotional service, uh, even at the stage of sadhana, uh, still surpasses the uh, achievement of all different types of liberated uh, sages, the mukti and the siddhi, and other types of liberated souls, brahman libera liberated souls, and Rupa Goswami provides many evidences as such, muktanam apisiddhanam, out of, out of uh, some millions of liberated and perfected beings, narayana parayana, uh, Devotee of Lord Narayan is very rare. rare Kotishvapi Mahamune, Prashantatna Sudulaba. Such a great soul is, is perfectly situated in peacefulness and uh, is very, very rare. Even uh, amongst the millions of liberated and perfected beings, a devotee of Lord Narayan is very rare. In, you can read these uh, verses supporting this principle that the devotional service surpasses the liberation. You can read these verses in your own time and we will bring your, your, your direction to one couple of mentions here regarding achieving Vaikuntha, from Vaikuntha Loka, achieving further progress to Krishna Loka. Uh, it is discussed by Rupa Goswami and Srila Prabhupada is discussing on pages 45 of the Nectar of Devotion. Some of the liberated persons who have achieved these four stages of liberation may also develop affection for Krishna and be promoted to the Goloka Vrindavan planet in the spiritual sky. In other words, those who are already promoted to the Vaikuntha planet and who possess the four kinds of liberation may also sometimes develop affection for Krishna and become promoted to Krishna Loka. Out of many kinds of devotees, 
of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the one who is attracted to the original form of the Lord Krishna in Vrindavan is considered to be the foremost, first class devotee. Such a devotee is never attracted by the opulence of Vakunta or even Dwarka, the royal city where Krishna ruled. The conclusion of Srila Rupa Goswami is that uh, the devotees who are attracted by the pastimes of the Lord in Gokul or Vrindavan are the topmost devotees. So in that way, chapter 4 is concluded. Uh, let us uh, read chapter 5 of the Nectar of Devotion, The Purity of Devotional Service. Prabhupada begins uh, his discussion. All of the previous instructions imparted by Srila Rupa Goswami in his broad statements can be summarized thus. As long as one is materially inclined or desirous of merging into the spiritual effulgence, one cannot enter into the realm of pure devotional service. Next, Rupa Goswami states that devotional service is transcendental to all material consideration and that it is not limited to any particular country, class, society or circumstance. So this is the principle of Srila Rupa Goswami, that devotional service is completely transcendental and is eligible, can be performed uh, without consideration of one's country, one's class, one's society or one's circumstances. Uh, Prabhupada is commenting on the bottom of the page that it's on the basis of his position that anyone can now become a Gaudiya Vaishnava from any part of the world or any part of the universe. Anyone who is a pure Vaishnava is situated transcendentally and therefore the highest qualification in the material world, namely to be in the mode of goodness, has already been achieved by such a person. <clears throat> Our Krishna consciousness movement in the Western world is based on the above mentioned proposition of Srila Bhakti Sunan Sri Thakur Goswami Prabhupada, our spiritual master. On his authority, we are claiming members from all sections of the Western countries. So this is a very important statement that Srila Prabhupada is making, that on the basis of the authority and of the statement of Srila Rupa Goswami, that devotional service is the right. Actually, a little later, Rupa Goswami gives an evidence here from, different, from the Padma Purana that, my dear king, this is... Uh, King Vishishta tells Dilip uh, that, and Vishishta Muni tells, tells Dilip, King Dilip, my dear king, everyone has the right to execute devotional service, just as he has the right to take early bath in the month of Magh, December, January. So actually, living in Navadip Dham, you see one amazing, uh, uh, attractive feature of Magonga in Navadip Dham is that the uh, uh, everyone is welcome. There is no consideration. Uh, everyone is welcome to merge themselves and submerge themselves into the uh, uh, nectarian transcendental amrit of uh, Vishnu Pari Magonga and take bath there. So, in the same way, everyone is eligible to perform the devotional service to Sri Hari. And Prabhupada's mentioning that on the basis of this principle of Sri Rupa Goswami, uh, he was ordered by Shridant Shashri Thakur to preach in the English language in the Western world. And Shri Prabhupada so wonderfully uh, fulfilled the order of Shridant Shashri Thakur preaching in the English language and uh, converted so many of the uh, Western people to become Vaishnavas and in this way manifest in a tremendous, a tremendously glorious, victorious manifestation of the principles of Srila Rupa Goswami, we could say unprecedented manifestation that no other preacher subsequent to Rupa Goswami has, has uh, revealed to the, uh, this extent, to the tremendous extent that Srila Prabhupada has of the potency of the Sankirtan movement of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu as, as analyzed for us by Srila Rupa Goswami, Nana Shastra Bichara and Aiko Nipuno, the expert in analyzing, so he's uh, Rupa Goswami is in this case he's, he's analyzing the, 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 the glorious eligibility uh, of the or, or, or lack of eligibility you could say or the limitless the, the, the broadness of the eligibility for practicing Krishna consciousness and uh, this tremendous principle is so much so much 
There's so, so much revealed by the preaching of, of A.C. Bhaktivedanta Shami Shri Prabhupada who delivered so many of those from the uh, Western world and delivered them to the platform of being Vaishnavas and liberated souls. So what a servant of Srila Rupa Goswami is Srila Prabhupada. Now, Rupa Goswami, in, in addition to the evidence from Parana Purana regarding eligibility for practice of devotional service, he also quotes uh, additional verses like this beautiful verse from the uh, Skanda Purana when they're properly dressed, the sudras are also initiated in a Vaishnava cult of devotional service. And when they're properly dressed with tulak on their bodies and beads on their heads and on their, on their hands and on their necks, they appear to be coming from Vaikuntha. Beads on their hands, uh, beads on their hands and on their necks, they appear to be coming from Vaikuntha. In fact, they're very beautiful that immediately they surpass the ordinary Brahmins. This is from Skanda Purana, uh, describing those sudras who are wearing tilak and chanting the name of Hari and are wearing the, the, the tulasi beads around their neck. And Rupa Goswami also quotes this verse from Hari Bhakti Vilas, which you'll find also in Hari Bhakti Vilas. Yata kanchanatam jati kamsham rasha vidanataha tata diksha vidanena dujatam jayatenunum. Any person who is properly initiated into the Vaishnava cult certainly becomes a Brahmin. Yuta Diksha Vidhanena Dvija Tam Jayatenrinam. That the Diksha process, Diksha Vidhanena, uh, turns a person to become second born, Dvija Tam, he achieves a second birth. That man takes a second birth beyond the birth of his, uh, of his mother and is no longer, we can say, we can say that man who has. Dvijatam uh, Jayate. He has achieved a second birth as a result of Tata applied Diksha Vidhan, the process of Diksha, which is part of the sadhana process, part of the sadhana bhakti process, accepting Diksha and uh, worshipping the deity, etc., Pancharatrika uh, Vidhi. So that's Diksha Vidhan in uh, applying the Diksha process. Uh, such a person achieves jayate dvija, he achieves a second birth, such a nunam, a man, achieves a second birth. In the same way as jata, just as in the same way as kanchana tam jati kam sham rasham vidanataha, that bell metal mixed with mercury, mercury can turn into gold. So citing this important evidence, Sanat Rupa and Sanat Goswami are establishing that a person from any uh, country, ethnic background, or any circumstance of caste, creed, nation, etc., race, can practice devotional service. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu ordered that Prithibite, all over the world, as many towns and villages are there, my name will be established there. So we are trying to do that. So his name should be established does not mean that they should remain as Javanom Lechas and simply they should know Lord Chaitanya. No, actually, the fact is that everyone should be elevated to the position of a Vaishnava, a purified Vaishnava. So in this way can see, we can see how fundamental and how important this principle of Sri Rupa Goswami has established in the Bhakti Rasam in Sindhu and evidence with other Vedic literatures that uh, eligibility for anyone from any class, background, greed, greed, nation, race, etc. can practice devotional service and become a purified Vaishnava uh, on the authority of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and the Parampara of coming through Srila Prabhupada. And this is a very important principle for those of us who are uh, practicing uh, Gaudiya Vaishnava Krishna consciousness principles and also a very important principle for the spreading of Krishna consciousness that we are authorized to spread Krishna consciousness all over the planet and this is the order of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. This is also the specific flavor of his Sankirtan movement, uh, especially at this moment uh, in the, uh, after the recent appearance of His Divine Grace Sesi Bhakti Vedanta Shami Shri Prabhupada, we have uh, even greater facility for contributing to and for participating in the Sankirtan movement of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu because our ISKCON centers are spreading all over the world and in so many, one is given so much opportunity for Sharushanga associating with followers of Shri Prabhupada and uh, hearing Krishna Kata and associating, chanting with them and serving in the mission of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu Sankirtan, 
distributing books, preaching Krishna consciousness. So these are uh, the, the, these uh, fundamental practices of Vaidhi Sadhana Bhakti are being so much facilitated by the International Society for Krishna Consciousness on the basis of this evidence of Srila Rupa Goswami. In this way, the uh, followers of Srila Prabhupada should be very well versed in the teachings of Rupa Goswami to uh, understand the uh, authorization of the activities and the position that we are uh, as uh, uh, aspiring to, to be situated on in the uh, pursuance of Srila Prabhupada's instructions. Another aspect of the purity of devotional service is in regard to uh, the, in a case of fall down and how the Krishna Bhakta who is practicing Bhagavad Bhakti devotional service to Sri Hari even in the case if there is some fall down uh, he need not do any extraneous activity uh, for Purashjita or atonement but rather he simply can carry on with the practice of Bhagavad Bhakti and he'll be purified of all discrepancies. And Prabhupada is uh, commenting in this regard. If circumstantially there is some fall down, the Vaishnava need have nothing to do with the Prayashchitta. One who has taken to Bhakti, the devotional service of the Lord, need have nothing to do with karma or jnana. If by chance or mistake he does something which is forbidden, there is no need for him to perform any purificatory ceremony, ceremony because the Lord is situated within his heart. He takes compassion for the devotee's accidental mistake and corrects him from within. So in this way, uh, devotional service, we can see purity of devotional service is established. So in this lesson we've been discussing the eligibility for accepting and practicing and advancing in Vaidhi Sadhana Bhakti. We discussed Iskand's practice of claiming members from all sections of the Western countries in relation to the principle established by Srila Rupa Goswami, and we explained the independent of nature of pure devotional service with reference to evidence given in Chapter 5, particularly in relation to the uh, performance of Prayashtuta in the case of any discrepancy. In our next lesson, we'll be commencing our study of the 64 items of Sadhana Bhakti as enumerated subsequently by Srila Rupa Goswami. Let's conclude this lesson with this quote from Srila Prabhupada. My dear Uddhava, any person who takes shelter of me in complete surrender and follows my instructions, giving up all occupational duties, is to be considered the first class man. By one stroke of devotional service, if someone gives up all obligations and simply surrenders under the Supreme Personality of Godhead, he is no longer a debtor nor obliged to any other source of benefit. Srila Prabhupada Gijay.